You think rain crashes are just about wet roads? Think again. The real danger starts in the first few minutes when oil and contaminants rise to create invisible slick patches that even pro riders misjudge. Before we get into the details, know this. There's a free wet weather checklist waiting in the description, and I'll point you back to it at the end so you can apply these techniques right away. Today, you're going to see what really happens in the rain, frame by frame, and learn how to control it. You'll walk away knowing how to use progressive braking with engine braking, how to corner with a more upright bike, how to choose safer lines on wet roads, and how to apply it all with a simple checklist. But to understand why these skills matter, you first need to see what's hiding on the road in those first few drops of rain. 1. The Invisible Enemy Road Chemistry in First Minutes The hidden threat starts with the road itself. In the very first minutes of rainfall, the chemistry of the surface changes faster than most riders realize oils, hydrocarbons, and residue that have been baked into the pavement by sun and traffic don't stay locked in place once water arrives. Instead, that first splash of rain lifts them to the surface, creating an invisible slick that coats exactly where your tires need grip the most. What makes this so dangerous is the timing. Traction doesn't fade gradually. It often drops sharply within moments of the rain starting. That's why statistics and rider reports consistently identify the opening minutes of a storm as the most treacherous of all. Routes you know by heart behave like unfamiliar territory because the pavement now has a thin oily film separating your tires from the road. The Motorcycle Safety Foundation points out that the best defense is remarkably simple. If practical, avoid riding right when rain begins or pull off safely and let traffic and steady rainfall rinse away those contaminants. Think of it like this. Dry pavement offers texture and grip that your tires can bite into. Once rain hits, water mixes with those oils and spreads them thinly across that texture, erasing the friction you normally count on. From your perspective as a rider, it feels like the road has been swapped for polished glass in a matter of seconds. Even expert motorcyclists get caught off guard because the change is invisible. If you watch slow motion footage of tires rolling through the first rainfall, the effect becomes clear. The rubber skims across a glossy surface that forms between water and oil. This explains why the initial minutes see more incidents than longer, steady downpours. Once a storm has continued for a while, the surface is cleaner, clearing some of that film away. Until then, treating your familiar commute like new territory is the only safe choice. And here's where it connects directly to your control inputs. When traction takes this sudden hit, the way you brake, steer, and manage your bike has to change. Two, braking physics. Why dry techniques fail? Here's something most riders learn the hard way. Braking techniques that feel natural on dry asphalt can betray you in the rain. In dry weather, your brakes slow the bike by converting kinetic energy into heat with firm friction between tire and road, keeping you stable. Add water to that equation though, and the friction triangle shifts dramatically. Water reduces the tire's grip, shrinks the contact patch, and changes how your brakes feel. That's why you can't rely on your usual muscle memory. Braking in the wet demands a different touch. The critical mistake riders make is grabbing the brake lever with the same force they'd use on dry pavement. This overwhelms the reduced traction and often causes wheel lockup within seconds. Side-by-side -side demonstrations prove it clearly. One rider yanks the brake abruptly and the wheels slide out, while another builds pressure progressively and the tires stay connected to the road. That second method doesn't just preserve control, it actually maximizes stopping power by working within the real limits of wet traction. Stopping distance is where the difference feels biggest. On a wet road, stopping distance can easily double compared to dry asphalt. What might take two car lengths to stop on a dry day could take four or more in the rain. That means you need to begin braking earlier, maintain extra following space, and ease off the throttle sooner. Engine braking becomes a powerful tool here. Smooth downshifts let the engine help slow the bike without overwhelming that fragile contact patch, giving you steadier, more controlled deceleration. Many experienced riders also shift more of their deceleration toward rear braking and engine braking when the road is wet, backing it up with only light, progressive input on the front brake. This makes front wheel lockup far less likely when traction is uncertain. 
But it's not something to figure out in traffic. It's a technique to practice in a safe, controlled space, like an empty, wet parking lot, where you can feel the difference between abrupt and progressive pressure without taking risks. Then there's hydroplaning, a hazard that removes grip altogether when your tires meet more water than they can push aside. Prevention is direct. Keep tire pressures in spec, avoid puddles and standing water, and never slam the brakes if traction briefly breaks. Smooth, steady control is your safety net. Understanding braking dynamics in the rain is only half of the picture. The next challenge comes when you lean into a corner and the geometry of grip changes again, sometimes faster than you expect. Three, cornering dynamics, the lean angle, tipping point. Have you ever tipped the bike into a corner on wet pavement and felt it start to drift, almost without warning? That moment comes down to the relationship between lean angle and grip the exact balance that decides whether the tire holds or slips. Cornering is always about dividing up finite traction between holding your line and carrying speed. But in the rain, the margin shrinks dramatically. The tire's contact patch gets smaller and less capable of deforming around the road surface, which means lean angles that feel completely safe on dry asphalt can exceed the limits of grip when it's wet. This is why aggressive lean angles that look smooth in dry conditions turn risky in rain. The safest approach is to reduce lean noticeably compared with your dry weather cornering and keep the motorcycle as upright as possible. That requires adjusting your entry, scrub off speed before the corner, brake early while the bike is still upright, and roll in with steady speed through the apex. Once leaned over, any braking input becomes dangerous because it tries to claim traction you no longer have. The rule is simple but absolute. Never brake while leaned over in wet conditions. Body position still matters, but not in a dramatic way. Even small shifts can help reduce the lean angle the bike itself has to take. A subtle adjustment of your torso to the inside of the corner can keep more of the tire tread connected to the road. Think of it less as hanging off and more as a minor balance aid. If you're going to practice this, do it in controlled, low-risk environments like a training lot or structured course. On real roads, prioritize smoothness and upright stability above anything fancy. Throttle and steering inputs must also change. Snapping the throttle or jerking the bars unsettles the chassis when it has the least margin for error. Smooth roll-on of throttle and early deliberate steering create stability through the curve, letting the tires maintain consistent pressure against a slippery surface. Add extra space on your approach and always give yourself more room than you think you'll need. Understanding these cornering dynamics explains why rain humbles even skilled riders. What appears to be a minor miscalculation in lean or throttle becomes the exact tipping point into a loss of control. And when the difference between right and wrong is so subtle, seeing both approaches side by side makes the lesson impossible to miss. Four, expert technique. Breakdown, right versus wrong. Now it's time to see exactly how expert riding separates control from chaos when the road turns wet. On our controlled course, we set up side-by-side -side demonstrations so you can watch the wrong way and the right way unfold in real time. Rider A makes abrupt inputs, grabbing the front brake too hard, chopping the throttle mid-corner, and leaning aggressively with no setup. The result is immediate. The front wheel locks, the bike slides, and traction is gone. In contrast, Rider B shows the expert sequence. Progressive squeeze on both brakes with a slight rear emphasis. Engine braking to supplement deceleration. Reduced lean with a more upright posture and smooth throttle application. Instead of panic and skid, the bike stays balanced, the tires hold, and the rider exits cleanly. Notice how tire performance magnifies these differences. Even modest tire underinflation compromises your safety in the rain because it flattens the contact patch and reduces the tire's ability to clear water effectively. That's why one of the simplest yet most powerful habits you can build is checking tire pressure before every wet ride and adjusting it to the manufacturer's spec. A well-maintained tire gives your braking and cornering techniques the foundation to actually work. These demonstrations also reveal something that plain explanation can't capture. How progressive braking distributes weight evenly across the tire's reduced contact patch, while abrupt braking overloads it and causes an instant breakaway.
You can see it in slow motion. The wrong method makes the suspension dive and the tires skip across water, while the correct method keeps the bike stable and balanced. It's the same road, the same rain, but inputs alone decide the outcome. Technology does help. Modern ABS, traction control, and rain riding modes buy you precious extra time when you get it wrong, but they don't replace proper inputs. Electronics reduce the punishment for mistakes. They don't make sloppy techniques safe. The best step you can take is to practice. One drill every rider should try is this. In a safe wet lot, approach at moderate speed, downshift for engine braking, add steady rear brake, then gently build front brake pressure until you feel it bite. Release and repeat until your body learns to apply pressure progressively instead of grabbing at the lever. That repetition builds the reflexes you need when rain turns routine roads unpredictable. Mastering your inputs keeps you upright, but another factor can still catch you off guard. The road itself doesn't have the same grip everywhere. 5. Line Selection Reading the Invisible Road Here's something riders often overlook. The line you choose across a wet road can be as decisive as your braking or throttle inputs. Not all pavement offers the same grip once rain falls, and the surface becomes an invisible patchwork of high and low traction zones. Painted lines, tar snakes, metal plates, and manhole covers all turn slick under rainfall. They may look harmless, but in practice they offer far less friction than the surrounding asphalt. The Federal Highway Administration reports that roughly three-quarters of all weather-related crashes occur on wet pavement, which underscores just how important it is to read the surface correctly and plan your line in advance. One of the most reliable strategies is to use the dry line, the pair of tracks left by cars ahead. Their tires have already displaced standing water and helped clear away some contaminants, leaving you with better grip compared to riding on the untouched center of the lane. The lane center is usually where oils collect and become especially dangerous during the early stages of rainfall, when contaminants rise to the surface. By positioning your motorcycle in those cleared tracks, you automatically give yourself traction that other parts of the road won't offer. When you encounter slick hazards like lane markings, crosswalk paint, or bridge grates, the safest method is to cross them in a straight line at steady speed with no braking or steering adjustments until your tires are back on high friction pavement. Any sudden change mid-crossing risks breaking the fragile grip you do have. Skilled riders constantly scan for subtle cues, like the different sheen between wet asphalt patches or water reflecting differently on smooth surfaces. These visual hints allow you to identify which sections will let the tire bite and which should be treated as no-go zones for braking or leaning. Drainage makes another difference. Some areas shed water quickly, while others stay darker and slick long after rain ends. If you see spots where water pools or the pavement remains shiny while the rest has started to dry, assume they remain hazardous. Adjust your line to route around them when possible, or lower your speed and keep inputs controlled if you must pass through. Learning to pick your line this way isn't about riding fearfully. It's about riding knowingly. And once you recognize that wet weather safety depends just as much on reading the surface as it does on controlling your inputs, you're ready to understand the deeper principle at play every time it rains. The key to riding safely in the rain isn't superhuman reflexes. It's committing to a few proven habits. First, use progressive braking combined with engine braking to slow smoothly without overwhelming traction. Second, keep your bike more upright and enter corners slower holding a dry line whenever possible. Third, make pre-ride checks a ritual. Tire pressure to spec, good tread, and a clear visor. If rain starts suddenly or visibility falls, the safest choice is to pull over and wait. Riders in surveys say training makes a difference. So practice in a safe lot or consider a wet weather course. Comment below with your worst rain scare or a technique that's worked for you, and let's turn hard lessons into safer rides for everyone.